Good morning, New Brunswick, and welcome to the New Brunswick Today show for today. Uh, we're so happy to have you with us. We're continuing with our series of interviews with the gubernatorial candidates. We actually have our first Republican joining us today, Mr. Steve Rogers. He's a commissioner in a town up in Bergen County called Nutley, and he is going to be joining us to talk about why he wants people to support him in the Republican primary that's going to be held on June 6th. There are five candidates on the ballot in that race. Uh, we've already spoken to some of the six Democrats that are running in the separate Democrat primary, but today we have our first Republican on the show, uh, Mr. Steve Rogers, so stick around for that. We are broadcasting live from Hidden Grounds, New Brunswick's independent coffee shop here. Uh, stop by. We're at the Espresso Bar today, actually, at 4C Easton Avenue. Uh, stop by, say hi, and get a cup of the best coffee in town and uh, while we bring out our special guest today uh, I'll give you a little flavor of who he is take a look at here's him announcing his candidacy actually on the Fox Business Channel uh, take a look we'll be right First back with Steve, Steve Rogers you've got a major announcement that you'd like to make to our audience yes Charles and it's an honor to make it here uh, tonight I am officially announcing my candidacy for governor of the state of New Jersey Tomorrow at 12 noon, I'll be at the Madison Hotel in Morristown to unveil my plans for New Jersey. I'm really, really happy for you. I'm proud of you. Um, you, you, saw some, you saw a connection between Donald Trump and these blue-collar workers, everyday Americans, and your travels, particularly throughout the state of New Jersey. It's been a blue state for a long time. What makes you think you can win, is, and, and why is now the time? Now's the time because the people of the state of New Jersey, as well as around the nation, are really fed up with the establishment uh, political entities that we have around the country. Charles, uh, taxes are crushing people. Donald Trump addressed that. I'm going to address it in New Jersey. Uh, businesses are being uh, hurt very badly by regulations. Donald Trump addressed it. I'm going to address that in New Jersey. What we have to do is bring the power back to the people as Donald Trump has. And you said something earlier, and we've said all along, I knew from the beginning he was going to win because the pollsters were dead wrong. They took a scientific method in order to come to their conclusions. What Trump did and what I saw, and I see in New Jersey, especially when I move forward, is the heart, soul, and spirit of the people. They're going to have, I'm sure, a lot of money. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the poor guy on the campaign right. trail. But they could throw every bit of money they want at their campaign. We are going to win this race because we are going to touch the heart, soul, and spirit of the people of the state of New Jersey. And welcome back. Uh, we're now joined by that man, uh, Nutley Township Commissioner Stephen Rogers. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Rogers. Well, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm impressed. we got quite an operation here. The entrepreneurs of the 21st century right here. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Uh, we're very proud of what we do here in New Brunswick today. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Um, for people who don't know who you are, uh, tell people how'd you get your start, and uh, you know what what made you want to get into local politics, run for office, and do all this stuff. Well, to begin with, uh, 38 years of my life I spent on the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department, retired as a detective bureau commander. So I've seen it all: the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, people uh, who are in very, very serious trouble with regard to uh, becoming crime victims, our drug problem that we're facing in this state. And sadly to say, because of the economic strife that people are facing, uh, I've seen people actually uh, kill themselves as a result of uh, depression and, and, and things like that when you're faced with great, great financial difficulties. In addition to that, I spent 25 years in the United States Navy, uh, retired as a lieutenant commander, and worked for the uh, FBI National Joint Terrorism Task Force. So I know about terrorism. I, I know about the, the vulnerabilities of this state, and we're going to need a governor who understands that, who can address that. I ran for the Nutley School Board in 2008, was elected, then ran for the Nutley Board of Commissioners, which is our city council in 2012, and re-elected in 2016, and announced on my re-election day that I would be leaving office for either one of two reasons. One, I believe in term limits, so certainly uh, I will leave at the end of that. So you're limiting yourself to two terms yeah, on the council. Yeah, yeah. Term limits is very important in office. It, it, it really is a matter of uh, giving someone else the chance to ex explain their vision for whatever uh, road that they're on. It, it prevents a lot of corruption, uh, a lot of influence. And, and the real reason why I'll be leaving uh, in 2016 is that I'm going to become your next governor, so I cannot hold two offices. <laughs> sure. So tell us, you know, uh, what do you think the biggest issues are facing the state? And from your perspective, if you win, what would be the, the, the most important uh, things that you would champion? You know, it's, a, it's an interesting question because uh, the, the candidates all focus in on taxes. And of course, taxes is very, very important. And, uh, certainly, I have ways and means that I'm going to address the tax issue. 
But it boils down to leadership. It boils down to having a leader who's going to be able to address quality of life issues in our state. And, and you know, I've, I've always believed that we need to find the root cause of the problems we're facing, and that root cause begins in the home, in the family. And uh, what I intend to do is make sure that we bring in all the partners in our state. Now, I'm talking about business and industry, I'm talking about political, I'm talking about government and nonprofits. And what I'd like to do is reinvigorate the Office of uh, Faith Based Initiatives and even get our clergy involved so that we can address issues right in the neighborhoods and in the homes uh, of every town and every city in this state. Meaning what? Well, we know, for example, that in many of the uh, cities, we need jobs, we need people working. Even out in the suburbs, we need people to get back to work. You can't get people back to work unless you get businesses, whether it be small or large, or like yourself, entrepreneurs. You, we, we give you the opportunity to grow here. We can't do that in New Jersey. Just can't. Um, so, you mentioned uh, family, uh, family values kind of being an important part of your um, uh, priorities. And you're a big supporter of President Trump. Yes. And we'll get to that yeah, in yeah. a bit. But uh, I want to ask you about what I think is, is the biggest issue here in our city, uh, New Brunswick, immigration. Right. There's um, a lot of folks who, who don't have their papers and who are living in fear that uh, an emboldened ICE is going to, to come and, and take them and actually separate parents from children, separate husbands and wives. Uh, and and just, just this week, an uh, uh, Indonesian man uh, was deported who had lived in America for 20 years, you know, a, a family guy, working guy, no criminal record, and he's being deported because he uh, was uh, 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 neglected to fill out a piece of paper 20 years ago. Um, how, how can you say that, that uh, uh, the Trump administration is supporting family uh, values when they're literally tearing families apart? Well, to begin with, they're not tearing families apart, Jason. That's not happening. We have cases like this, but I will tell you, when I'm governor, there will be no sanctuary cities in this state, number one. Number two, any elected official who uh, declares their community as a sanctuary city, I am not going to... Uh, uh, replace the funding that President Trump is going to take away from that city with New Jersey tax dollars. Number three, I'm going to direct the Attorney General to prosecute any elected official who breaks the law. I'm going to be the governor. That's so you'll actually it. you'll actually try to uh, lock up politicians who going to declare be, their city a sanctuary city, breaking, their county a sanctuary. They're county. breaking the law. They're going to be prosecuted. Look, the police officer, look, I'm a 38-year veteran of a police department, so I know what these men and women in our police services are going through. Uh, it's a very difficult job, and these politicians put them in a very difficult position. Uh, but don't, don't local police say that they prefer to have sanctuary policies in place because it makes it easier for them to interact with the immigrant community and have witnesses come forward? Don't, don't local police tend to support those types of policies? Police officers are called to enforce the law, uh, so they don't... Um, uh, uh, way in either way, all right? I, I would say this, though. When you have, let me give you an example, okay? We're talking about an issue that has really been, the narrative's been changed. We're not talking about, uh, like the, the case you just said, which, which we'll get into that in a minute, but we're talking about criminals. We're talking about individuals who may be involved in crimes, who may be wanted. Those are the first people we're gonna target, but let me just say this to you. All my years as a police officer, all right? I always say, gee, we've never arrested a guilty person, all right? When a person commits a crime, they believe they're going to get away with it. So we talk about the guy here 20 years. He knows that he came here illegally. He, he put his children at risk, he put his family at risk, and he got caught. Now, when they get caught, gee, I didn't know. But, but, really. but these are actually folks who are fleeing persecution, Christians being persecuted in Indonesia. You know what's going on in well, Indonesia. That's why these folks are, came to New Jersey in the first place. Yeah. You don't think they should stay? No. There's a pathway. There's a pathway to citizenship. There's a legal way. My wife, my wife, perfect example. You want to talk about fleeing a country? Her entire life, she did not live under the Stars and Stripes. She lived under a red flag with a hammer and sickle on it. Soviet Union, Soviet power, rough, tough dictatorship, all right? She came to this... still is, right? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you know, nothing's changed much there. I mean, we got Vladimir Putin as, uh, as the president, and we see what's happening there. But here's my point. She came to the United States legally. She spent a lot of money. 
she spent 10 years uh, trying to become a citizen here, and finally she became an American citizen. Do you think, and I, I, I ask this question all across the state, does anyone believe that that is fair, uh, that, that we're just going to open the gates to anybody who wants to come here without vetting them? Is it fair to those who spent their money and, 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 and really sweated blood, sweat, and tears to come here legally? It's not fair. They're really going to be a state of laws or a state of lawlessness. Now, the Democrats, they're, going to, they're saying they're going to have a sanctuary state, but I've asked the question, who's going to pay for that? Who's going to pay for the children's health care, the family's health care? Who's going to pay for the schools? You know what Phil Murphy said quietly to a moderator in Newark when I was at that debate? He leaned over and he said, we'll find the money. You know who's going to pay for it? You and me. I'm going to be the governor of this state, and I'm going to tell you, that is not going to happen. Now. Uh, let's talk about the president. You are a diehard supporter. You've been on Fox just, just this week uh, speaking in support of the president. Um, it's been a rough week for the president, though. Um, and and I, I've been asking that all the candidates, uh, not picking on you, but I've been asking them all, um, do you support the impeachment of the president? I take it you do not. Yeah, look, look, I worked for Donald Trump. I was his uh, New Jersey uh, uh, advisor here during the campaign. Right. And uh, I could tell you this, all right, when he won, through all the cheering and all that, I mentioned this on Fox News yesterday, it was at that point in time I said, we have just begun a four-year fight, a four-year battle. Why? Because the Democrats do not accept the fact that he got elected. It is ridiculous to talk impeachment. Now, what we addressed this week is Director Comey, all right? Now, now Director Comey politicized the FBI when he went in and he testified before, before the Congressional Committee and suggested and recommended, in fact, made the decision that she shouldn't be prosecuted. That is not the job of the FBI director. He does the investigation, hands the evidence over to the attorney general, and then she makes the decision. But he also helped the Trump campaign with his later statements, right? Well, he went back and forth. He was playing a political game. Look, I've worked at FBI headquarters for two years, the greatest agency on the face of the earth. And I worked, at, ironically, when uh, Robert Mueller was the director, okay? But I could tell you, what Comey did is he played a political game and it backfired. So my question is, if that memo was so damning and so important and he believed in his heart that Donald Trump tried to influence the, the, the election, why didn't he hand it in then? Why did he not, why did he wait? Why did he put it to a file? You see, this is the irony of this whole situation. No, uh, no impeachment. Okay. Um, leaving that aside, Chris Christie, good friends with Donald Trump, also a candidate for impeachment, also uh, been uh, accused of, of, of uh, crimes, official misconduct. Do, do, you, do you think the governor deserves to be impeached? Throughout this entire campaign, because I'm a Republican, I've been asked about Chris Christie. And what I have done is invoke Ronald Reagan's 11th commandment, thou shalt not speak evil of any, any other politician who's a Republican. But I will say this. But is that really putting the country first? Is that the best policy to have? Is it, I'm not going to criticize any Republicans publicly? Not during an election. Not, but, 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 but I will say this with regard to Christie. I believe, and what I will do, is return to every single public employee, especially cops. I mean, I, 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 I was part of this whole fiasco when we were promised our cost of living allowances. That's going to be restored. The pension system is going to be filled. And there's ways of doing that. My only... Uh, uh, bone of contention, if you will, with Chris Christie is you promised police officers in particular. I have the letter. I was a PBA president at that time in Nutley, New Jersey. Right, he broke his promise. Where he yeah. broke his promise. You don't break your promise to thousands and thousands of law enforcement officers. They deserve what they were told that they would get when they went on this job. And I'm going to make sure that that's restored. Okay. And so uh, you, you do have this you know, lengthy career in law enforcement. You've been uh, actually working at the FBI. Um, I mean, you've, you've probably charged people with obstruction of the administration of the law here in New Jersey. Um, just knowing the, the basic facts of, of uh, the case involving the president, uh, do, you, do you think that he's, <laughs> wait he's a minute. committed? Wait, uh, wait a minute. You just said something interesting. Facts. Tell me the facts. There are no facts. There's no evidence, and that's the very point. Now, now, and well, you, 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 I mean, there are certain facts that the, the president did did dismiss the uh, FBI director and did yeah. say in an interview that uh, it, that it was, you know, inspired by the Russia uh, investigation. That he thought that the Russia investigation was illegitimate or somehow not 
not good, and, and so that's part of the reason he dismissed the FBI director, but, but, no? But the question is, did he really intend what they are saying? Let me give you an example. Knowing how we see Donald Trump, all right? Now, now you and I could be sitting here, right? Sure. And we could be having coffee, and I only know, hey, Jason, is this thing going to go away with Flynn, all right? Simple, simple question. So what does Comey do? He writes it down in a memo and puts it away, all right? Mm -hmm. And now they're trying to link this to say that the president tried to influence an investigation. You know what, it, it was probably, I don't know, this is my point, probably a casual conversation, knowing how this guy talks, you know. Uh, look, the point is, when we, you're too young to remember this, but a lot of us my age saw Dragnet back in the 60s. Oh, great show, sure. Yeah, right, yeah. okay. And what does Sergeant Joe Friday always say? Just the facts. Just the facts. Just the facts. And, and I've said it on Fox for the past three months, where are the facts? You know, where are the facts? Where is the evidence that Donald Trump actually did what they, what, what's interesting, did what they are not clear as to what they're saying he did? Nobody's clear. But what about Michael Flynn? Didn't he uh, take payments from foreign governments and fail to disclose that? Uh, I, I, I yeah, mean, it's, he's, yeah. he's, he's, Look, he's, I, he's, I, there's a grand jury I investigating with, him. I, Don't you think that, 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 that Michael Flynn was a bad choice? Look, I was with Mike Flynn at the Republican National Convention, and we chatted here and there, and, you know, uh, uh, not that we're personal Was the friends. Russian ambassador okay. there? <laughs> yeah, I think he was. Well, think about this. My wife is Russian, so you could imagine how I'm, I'm just waiting for them to tie this whole thing in. Sure. But my point is this. You're absolutely right. In that case, it appears to me, because there is no evidence, but it appears that Mike Flynn made a mistake. Uh, however, keep in mind, what's being left out of the narrative is that it was President Obama and his administration that cleared Michael Flynn. It wasn't Trump. So Flynn was cleared with his security clearances when Obama was in office. He didn't make him the national security advisor. No, but, he, but, but, but I've got to tell you, these clearances, okay, across the board, you have to get vetted. I mean, I have been, I, I, I had a top secret clearance when I was in the uh, military, and it's a very tough, stringent uh, process, all right? So the Obama administration said it was okay, Mike, you're okay. And then all of a sudden, Obama, he gets all, remember what Obama did. For the first time, that, at least in my memory, working with the U.S. government, uh, where a president says, now everybody could share all this information across the board with all these intelligence agencies. Why did Obama do that? You know, you don't do that, but he did. And then he, 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 he waited for him to leave office, Trump comes in office, and then all of this begins to explode. Well, let's move on to New Jersey. I know you've got a, a lot of issues here. Um, big one, for, for, for me at least, is the environment. I'm, I'm very concerned about some of these plans to build pipelines through populated areas. Um, uh, you yes. Know, just, just concerned in, nature, in general about the air and the water um, and, and having access to clean water. Um, tell me, what are you going to do for the environment to protect New Jersey's uh, air and water? Well, I kind of have told people the first thing we do is get all that hot air out of Trenton. Okay, <laughs> we're going to get rid of those guys. Look, I was down in the Pinelands, all right, and there are citizens down there who are very concerned about a pipeline going through yes. the, the Pinelands. I went down there. In fact, I'm the only gubernatorial candidate who's traveled all over the state running away from special interest and going towards the people and to, 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 you know, sit in their living rooms and speak to them about issues like this. So the people in the Pinelands oppose the gas pipeline going through the uh, preserves down there, right? Sure. They're right. They're right. They went in mass to city hall meetings, and yet the uh, uh, commission down there went against the will of the people. <clears throat> well, as governor, what I intend to do is make sure that the will of the people will prevail. I don't like big government. As, uh, who am I as a governor or the state to tell you that we're going to change the character of your neighborhood, that we're going to do things that are against the will of the people? Let the people decide what they want in their community. And I've said this, we're Americans. We could do anything. We've landed men on the moon. We've got people, we've got um, the spaceships going to Mars. You mean to tell me you, we can accomplish all of that and we can't get a gas company? to stay away from the pipelines, to stay away from hurting the environment. It's an absolute necessity that we let people take control of decisions like this. So how would you do that? The Pinelands Commission, uh, you, 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 would, you would ask them to oh, reevaluate no. it, or no. what, what are you going to do? I will fire every single member of the Pinelands Commission, okay? Fire them, because they're political appointees, and who will go on the new commission are people like you and others who have concerns about the environment, 
as well as, all right, those appointees who are experts in this field. You've got to balance these commissions out. How do you explain three or four hundred people in a community going to a meeting, expressing their will against this, and the commission ignoring all of them, saying, well, we're going to do what we want to do? It's influence. It's money. Follow the money. Indeed. And uh, so, so speaking of money, last night there was a debate um, where two of the Republican candidates got to uh, uh, be a part of a, a taxpayer-funded debate. Uh, you were not a part of it. You were not invited. Uh, tell folks why, why, why didn't they see you there, and, and how does the system work, and, and, and how's, how's it working out being on the outside? Well, I've learned that, you know, you hear that we're a corrupt state. I didn't realize the magnitude of the corruption. It's really bad. Let me give you an example, something close to my heart, and then I'll get to your the New Jersey State PBA. All right. Now think about this. I'm a former PBA president in a local. All right. Uh, and I'm a 38-year veteran of the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department. All right. So what does the New Jersey State PBA do? Even before I announced, they decided to endorse Phil Murphy. Phil Murphy, the Democrat, who helped Obama and Clinton bring Ferguson. Baltimore, Cambridge, who's in favor of bail reform, who's in favor of sanctuary cities, who's probably a guy that supports every anti-cop policy that you can imagine. I'm, I'm just curious, what did Obama do uh, regarding, you said Obama brought Ferguson? Or oh, yeah, so yeah. What, well, well so, remember what happened in Ferguson? Of course. Remember what happened in Baltimore? Yeah, yeah. Remember what happened in Cambridge when a police sergeant went and arrested a professor? Obama had wanted this great beer summit? I do recall okay, that, but so what, what is, I, I don't see what that has well, to do with... Oh, I'll, I'll explain to you what that has to do with it. When you have a Democrat running for office in New Jersey as governor, and he is part of that team that, that created an atmosphere in this country that brought us strong support for organizations like Black Lives Matters and others, how do you escape that? How do you, I mean, when you're part of this, this, this Democrat party, there, my point is, is that you don't support people because of money, and I'm going to share that with you to your point, who have done a lot of damage to law enforcement across this country. You, you, you understand? I mean, you're looking at me as if Well, I just, I, I, I mean, you, you, you bring up Black Lives Matter, yeah. um, and you're, you're saying you don't, you don't support that. Absolutely not. Well, well you know, why? Don't, don't Black Lives Matter? Boy, you sound like a reporter that I run into across the country. Every life matters, all right? But the organization itself and other organizations, Jason, when they're marching down the street, kill cops. What's, you know, dead cops should be dead. I mean, that to me is wrong. And that to me, look, every life matters, all right? I had, you know, my campaign manager is an African American, okay? I hire in my office a wide, uh, diverse number of people, all right? My point is, though, any organization that goes out and screams about killing cops. I have a problem with that. Phil Murphy, and who is the New Jersey State PBA's candidate, won't address that issue. He won't stand up and say, I'm opposed to that. Why not? I, I, I don't think that's the, the public position of Black Lives Matter, that, that cops should be killed. I, that's not what I've been, I've been covering them. Okay. I've, okay. I've, see, I've been part of the marches. I've seen it happen. I don't, I don't, I don't see that happening. I think that's kind of a... Uh, a stretch to say that that's the public position of Black Lives Matter is that cops should be killed. I think the public position is that uh, violence shouldn't be used against, uh, you know, the people so, of the country. All right. So who's 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 creating the violent confrontations? The police. The police are called there to do a job, and unfortunately, because of the New Jersey State PBA's candidate Phil Murphy. All right. These officers in this state are not going to be able to do their job and their job is to protect innocent people. Whether you're black, white, it doesn't matter what color you are. If you are burning property, uh, uh, assaulting people, assaulting police officers, what are the cops supposed to do? And we saw it happen. We saw it happen right in Berkeley a few weeks ago. Let the police just sit back and do nothing. And then what's gonna happen? So I'll be the governor that will make sure there will be law and order. I don't care what color you're on here, but the police officers in this state are going to be are going to have the authority to do their job. And right now, Jason, they're unable to do their job. Um, Good debate, huh? Yeah. So, so I, I do want to move on to one of the bigger issues in New Jersey right now is transportation. We're right near the New Brunswick train station, and uh, NJ Transit's really, really screwing up. They're they're uh, uh, 
yeah. not providing good service, and their infrastructure is falling apart, and it's actually scary and dangerous sometimes yes, to, to, to ride the trains. What are you going to do to fix all that? Well, first of all, you find out the root cause of the problem. And it's, again, the politicians who get reelected year in and year out because of money and influence who created a problem. Now, are we going to reelect the same politicians who created a problem? I hope not. But you fix this problem in a couple of ways. Number one, management, supervision, all right? Somebody's not doing their job. Maybe a whole bunch of people are not doing their job. So you've got to have a management study, you have to have a, a, an efficiency study, and then you find out where your vulnerabilities are and then correct them. Now let me say this to you. You know, I learned something last week. I met with citizens with disabilities all over the state. And I learned, and this is the importance of a political leader going out and meeting people. Do you know, Jason, you may not know this, but this is heartbreaking. I've talked to people in wheelchairs that have been in train stations. They need to depend on the conductor getting out and putting a little ramp between here and there, okay, so that they can get wheeled onto the car. A lot of these conductors don't come out and do that. They've got to wait for the next train to come. That is tragic. That is sad. It's discriminatory. Mm -hmm. So we immediately address the management and supervisory issues and find out who's not doing their job, number one. Number two, in the military, we have had what we call operational readiness inspections. And no notice. Boss comes in, let's, let's inspect. Let's see what's going on, right? Off guard, you don't know when they're walking in. That's how you catch the problems. Now, let's talk about uh, what I'd like to do down the road, and it ties in with clean energy. We have to start thinking about the next generation. I'm talking about electric cars, I'm talking about monorails, I'm talking about ferry services uh, uh, to and from Manhattan. Uh, we have a lot of waterways in New Jersey. So we need to do two things, immediately address the problems we're facing now, and at the same time begin research and development of future transportation industries. And you know that's obviously going to be very costly. Uh, the existing infrastructure, like yeah. I said, falling apart. That's going to take millions to fix, maybe billions. Adding new infrastructure, new routes, new things, yeah. going to cost a lot of money. Um, you know the water infrastructure, the sewer yeah. infrastructure is falling apart. Um, where are you going to get all the money to do this? How do you, what's your, your your financial plan for the state to, to to be able to do all these things like fully pay people's pensions and all that, yeah. but also be able to make those important investments. I'll tell you where we're going to get. First of all, I'm going to repeal the gas tax. All right, That's but, but wouldn't that cost cost it? The, would, that that would that would increase the the deficit, right? No, and I'll tell you how. Okay. All right, I'm going to repeal the gas tax because the gas tax is 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 not 23 cents. It's a lot more than that. You go throughout this state, and there are people who who are spending a lot of money traveling from point A to point B because of the land. I mean, they, they're traveling miles to get to work. Repeal the gas tax, reduce the income tax, and reduce the sales tax. Now, what does that do? It gives you the power to spend. More people spending, more revenue coming into the state. People are not buying in New Jersey anymore because of the taxes. 18,000 people a month are leaving. 227,000 left last year. And I'll tell you, Jason, what was startling to me on this campaign trail is talking to business people, small and large, entrepreneurs and small businesses like yourself, who are saying, we are not going to stay here in New Jersey any longer. We're going to Delaware, we're going to North Carolina, we're going elsewhere. When I ask why, the taxes, the regulations. So here's how we fund all of this. One is, you cut, you cut the taxes, you cut spending. Where am I going to go after? Department of Education? What, what spend, yeah, what spending? Yeah, Department of Education? Uh, first of all, we're going to get rid of park testing. It's $108 million over a four-year period. We're going to get rid of the, I really want to get rid of the entire Department of Education. All right? it, is, it is an employment agency. It does absolutely nothing but hinder the ability of local school boards and teachers to do their job. That's got to go. Millions will be saved on that. I'm going to go after the EPA. All right. Now, the EPA, there's a necessity for it, but the EPA has a lot of government overreach. They've done a lot of damage. So EPA would be federal agency. You're talking about the DEP? I'm oh, sorry, the DEP. Okay. Thank you for correcting me. The DEP, all right? So we're going to go after that, all right? Uh, and reduce a lot of these mandates that are job killers. They're absolutely job killers. So you're, you're going to cut the Department of Environmental Protection and... and, and uh... Yeah, what I'm going to do, I want to look at... Look, I, let me give you an example. There's a, there's a fellow I know in Essex County owns a print shop, all right? Okay. He's there 50 years. So a little, a, a, a little piece of dark matter was found in a river behind him, all right, stream, okay? 
the DP, DEP came in and immediately sanctioned the guy, wanted to find the guy. It wasn't his fault. They, they, they said it was ink from his, uh, all right, from his company. He went through months and months of red tape, bureaucracy, fighting this. You know what he did? He closed up, went to North Carolina. You see, those are the things that we need to address. So what happened? He leaves, the town lost rateables, people lost their jobs, uh, and now North Carolina reaps the benefit of this guy's company. So, I don't necessarily agree. I think the DEP. I think the DEP does serve some, it does. you know, it does. Uh, important yeah. functions. Yeah. But but so Department of Education, DEP. Uh, where else are you going to cut? Well, well, any 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 area. Uh, for example, I think that uh, what we need to do is a management study of every every department and agency in this state, and see where we can uh, cut. Look, I'm a commissioner of Township of Nutley. I cut our budget every single year because I found that there are more efficient ways of doing things. Uh, public, private sector partnerships. Uh, dig into the spirit of people. People like to volunteer. I want to work. Let me give you an example of what, what, what we're doing. When I become governor, and my wife is going to head this project up, we are actually going to create one of the largest, most efficient dog and animal sanctuaries in this state. Now, people so are... It'll be a sanctuary state after all. <laughs> yeah, for dogs and for animals. Okay, so we're going to have a uh, sanctuary uh, somewhere, probably in uh, either up in northern Jersey or southern Jersey, for animals, for dogs and other animals. But part of, there, and there's a reason why we're going to do that. Obviously, we're going to be able to help every municipality reduce their animal population in these shelters. That's saving tens of thousands of dollars in tax dollars. Number one, dogs and animals will be rehabilitated, but here's the, the, the more important thing. We're going to employ employ citizens with disabilities at this sanctuary. We're going to have therapists that are trained in dog and animal therapy for autistic children. You see? Now, how's that going to be done? There's where your public-private sector partnerships come in, or you have your nonprofits come in and you help them. So that's, that's what government should be doing, helping people across the spectrum. That's an out-of-the-box thing. Nobody talks about that, right? But we get widespread support for that. That is important. Um, so, last question for you today. Um, you know, I don't know how much you know about New Brunswick, but um, we got a wide audience here uh, listening today in New Brunswick, Middlesex County. What are you going to do specifically for this area, for, for the city of New Brunswick and Middlesex County, if you're elected? Well, what we have to do, look at this, this is a beautiful city. This is a real beautiful city. I just want to make sure that as we move forward, for example, you have a New Jersey transit station here. I want to make sure it's, it's operated efficiently, that it's always kept clean. I want to make sure that the quality of life of every citizen in this city and in Middlesex County is at a level that is respectful and that it should be. Uh, when we look at the train station, I'm sure in this city, like others, there are citizens with disabilities. We need to make sure that our citizens with disabilities are taken care of, that they are given, look, all men are created equal, all right? Well. Uh, when you talk to citizens with disabilities, a lot of them feel that they're not being treated right and proper and equally. I'm going to make sure that's not. I want to make sure that people like you, look, look at where you are. You're, you're here in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a nice cafe, and I want to make sure that people like you have the opportunity to see your dreams come true. We should be supporting things like this. Uh, so if this, and I'm sure this helps the city, you're helping a business here. So I want to make sure that in this county, in particular, that we continue to do the things that you're doing. In other words, as governor, I will make sure that you're able to do that. And of course, that'll be a model statewide. Well, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Rogers. Appreciate this the time. Great. Th thanks so much for joining us. Um, this is Steve Rogers. He's a commissioner in the township of Nutley, running for governor on the Republican primary election. That's going to be June 6th, so make sure you get out there and vote whether you're a Democrat or a Republican. And tune in next week where we'll continue our series of interviews with gubernatorial candidates to all the gubernatorial candidates who haven't uh, sat in the hot seat yet. Give us a call. We want you here. We'll give you a chance to speak about your campaign and uh, uh, introduce you to our audience. So looking forward to that. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. Thank you again, Commissioner. Oh, thank you. Real pleasure. This was great. Thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one.